Hi, I'm Tessa Davis. I'm a paediatric emergency medicine consultant and I'm one of the co-founders of Don't Forget the Bubbles. Our question that we're going to look at is how do I reduce a pulled elbow? And this is one of the most common procedures and, in my opinion, the most satisfying procedure that we do in paediatric emergency medicine. Before you start reducing a pulled elbow, you need to know what it is. So let's take a look. So the important thing to know here is the annular ligament. There are other ligaments holding your elbow together. So you've got your medial and lateral collateral ligaments, which hold your ulna to your humerus. But it's the annular ligament here that's important and that holds your radius onto your ulna at the elbow. What happens in a pulled elbow is that annular ligament, it slips over the radial head and it basically gets stuck in between the radial head and the humerus. And that makes it very painful when the child pronates and supinates because it kind of grinds against the annular ligament. The classic way that that presents is from a parent holding the child's arm as they're walking along the road and they fall and the parent pulls the child's, holding the child's hand, pulls the child's arm up. And that's how a pulled elbow happens. So there's lots of other ways. So they might be playing, they might grab onto something, um, but that tends to be the mechanism. And when you've got a clear mechanism, it's very straightforward because you know what it is. And classically, when the child presents, they'll be hanging their arm down by their side. Sometimes they might be holding onto their wrist as they walk in. But less. But in a child with a fracture, they tend to walk in holding their elbow like this, like it's really painful, whereas in a pulled elbow, it tends to hang lower down. So a combination of looking at the child, hearing the history, should give you a clear diagnosis. You will know when you examine the child that there's no bony tenderness. You should be able to feel all the way down and uh, there'll be no tenderness. But when you try to move their arm, particularly to pronate and supinate, they were likely to start crying. So you've got your classic diagnosis of a pulled elbow and now you need to reduce it. It's very simple to do that. So let's take a look at the procedure. So there's two main techniques. For both, you put your thumb over the radial head and you're not putting pressure on, you just want to feel the click. And then all you do is you simply hyperpronate the hand. That's it. You just pronate it, slightly hyperpronate, and you'll feel that click. The second method is supination flexion. So you put your thumb on the radial head, you supinate, and you flex. The evidence shows that hyperpronation is, m- is, sl- is slightly more likely to be successful, um, but both techniques are ve- very valid. I prefer to use the hyperpronation one and it works most of the time. So this is a very simple procedure, it's very quick, and here are my three top tips. So my first top tip is Don't worry if the child points to their radius. This is a common point of confusion. Could it be a distal radial fracture? If the child points to their radius, it's very common because that's where the child sometimes feels that the pain is. Because when you hold their arm or when they hold their wrist, it slightly pronates and supinates their hand and that can be painful. So if you've got a clear mechanism and the child clinically looks like a pulled elbow, it's likely to be a pulled elbow. There may be cases where there's a fracture and you would need to x-ray. Uh, that does happen. But likely, if you've got a radial fracture, they're going to have fallen onto the arm rather than having a clear history of it being pulled. And th- my second top tip is do it with confidence. So you're going into this procedure. It's very quick. You should be able to get it done in, in a few seconds. Um, and if you do it with confidence, you will feel the click. And I don't mean be aggressive about it. I just mean it doesn't need to be a slow procedure. It should be over quickly. And my third tip is that if you don't succeed, then let someone else have a go. So it may be that your technique wasn't great on that particular occasion. It may be you didn't have good fortune. Get someone else to try. And they can try a different, the different technique or they can try the same technique. But sometimes a second person on the day will have success. In most cases, you're going to feel the click and after 10 minutes or so, if you send the child back to the waiting room to play, they will be using their arm normally. There are times where you might feel the click, but then the child isn't fully moving their arm. And this can happen sometimes if you've got a tear in the annular ligament where they do, where you're convinced that you've felt the click, but they don't seem to be fully moving. And that should settle over time. And you might want to offer a review appointment for that uh, as a follow up, depending on what you have available in your institution. Sometimes you can't reduce it and we know that if the child presents within two hours of the injury it's going to be much easier to get the elbow back in. 
If you can't reduce it and you've had someone else to have a go, you will need to follow up the child. Most commonly, we would put the patient in a collar and a cuff and sometimes holding it in that position will help the elbow fall, uh, go back into place itself. So we would normally follow up and most commonly that will resolve. In rare cases where that doesn't resolve, you would need to refer on to your orthopaedic colleagues for follow up and rarely they would end up getting MRIs. By far, most of these are easily fixed in ED. This is a great procedure because you can fix it in a couple of seconds. Your patient is completely back to normal and everyone is very delighted. I hope now you'll feel confident to be able to reduce a pulled elbow yourself in ED. Thank you.